What is up, guys? Sam Dog, the infamous 253, coming at you with Dell Stewart, and we are here to do the 2021 Week 4 NFL game picks for week number four. Dallas, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. Can't believe we're on to October already. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, definitely. We are already on to October, and we went 10-6 and six in uh, Week 3, which is not pretty bad for us. And definitely disappointed in the performance last week for... Our Seahawks against the freaking Minnesota Vikings. But now we're on to week four. And I know I don't do this often, but we're just going to start out with our game, which is the su which is a Sunday game during at 1 p.m. when we take on the San Francisco 49ers at Levi Stadium. The Niners just had that crazy game against the Green Bay Packers. Scored a touchdown but left 35 seconds on the clock. And you knew A-Rod was going directly to Devontae Adams for big chunk plays. And Devontae Adams, after he took a cheap shot in that game, was able to drive down with Aaron Rodgers, with Devontae Adams to set up Mason Crosby for that 51-yard game-winning field goal to win the game. But, man, I'll tell you what, I'm just not feeling so so confident in in our team right now. I mean, granted, we just dropped, laid that egg against Minnesota. It's like our offense has not shown up in the second half. We are we were first with like our action in the first half, but we're in last place in the league with second half in the op, on offense, too. Like, with, yeah. yeah, and it's not a good look for us. It's like we just got to just get it going in the second half, and that's what's been irritating more, me the most is why hasn't our freaking offense been able to pr produce for every freaking quarter? It's not just one half. I don't want them just producing one half. I want to produce in the quarters. The reason second half lack of production in the second half is the reason why we choked that game, the freaking Tennessee, and the reason why we lost to the Minnesota Vikings because we couldn't get anything going in the second half either, man. And it's freaking frustrating, and I hate to see our team like that, but we've been in this situation before where we've been one and two before, and somehow, some way, Pete, for some strange for some strange reason, always finds a way to get it going sometime in the season. Let's hope that this is the week, but I'm not feeling too confident in this game, so I gotta, unfortunately, go against us this week. Dallas? <laughs> I'm gonna go with San Francisco as well, just maybe a superstition. Yeah, yeah I don't know if it's a superstition. Uh, I hope that we're wrong. Yeah, Our not. Backs are definitely against the wall. I, I think this is a season-defining game. Yeah, knock on wood. The season could go either way. Yeah, knock. Depending on uh, this game. Yeah, definitely knock on wood and hope that we're wrong. But just because we, when we do games, like I always mention this before, every time when there's a game where we feel like that we cannot that we're not going to win. That doesn't mean that we we want to win every game that we play obviously, but that's just how we feel, but we hope that we win that we we want to win this game. Trust me on that one. We hope we win this game, but oh, yeah. And um yeah. We hope I mean we we de I mean uh, we definitely can win this game. Yeah. Uh we seem to play better when, you know, there's a sense of urgency and desperation. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, we just thought... I'm not feeling too confident yeah. after the last two weeks. Yeah, hope we're, knock on wood and hope we're wrong. But yeah, that's just basically how it is right now. We're just not feeling too confident with the way our offense and defense have been playing lately. And this is definitely one of those sense of urgency games. We hope we get it together. We hope that we can bounce back and take down... If we can get a win, I think that could, uh, that could get us going again. Yeah, what would get us going again is if we at least win three of our next four games. That would be what would get us going again. Especially since oh, yeah. it's going to be a short week since we have to take on the Los Angeles Rams next week on Thursday Night Football. But yeah, we just wanted to get that one over with just because, you know, just the feelings of how we're feeling about our team lately with what's been happening in these last two weeks after our week one these victory against Indianapolis. Three games are, these next three or four weeks are very critical. They are. All right. Up next, we got, we're going to go back Thursday night football. The Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Jaguars were handed with the Cardinals all too, were, were handed with the Cardinals well until Trevor Lawrence fucked it up by throwing that pick six late in the second half after that crazy long play where Matthew Prater missed a 68 yarder and that dude for Jacksonville just took it 109 yards back for the touchdown before the end of the first half. Jags had some momentum, but we kind of had a feeling that they were going to 
blow it in the second half. And obviously, the Jacksonville Jaguars just traded C.J. Henderson to the Carolina Panthers, a cornerback, and the Panthers sent over Dan Arnold, the tight end Dan Arnold from the Panthers, now former Cardinal, now former Panther, to the Jacksonville Jaguars. So does that mean that one Hollister is an odd man out about to be out of a job? After he blew that, after because he dropped the pass, which ended up getting intercepted, intercepted by the Cardinals in that same game. Yeah, it, it could be. I tell you what, Trevor Lawrence has had a rough first three NFL games to his career. Yep. Meanwhile, the Cincinnati Bengals went in and got a huge win against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Was that game in? Since I think that game was in. Was that game it was in? At Hines. Yeah, they got a, They went into Pittsburgh and made a statement win, and Jamar Chase had two touchdowns in that game. I got the Cincinnati Bengals putting the Jacksonville Jaguars to 0-4 on Thursday Night Football. Give me the Bengals. Give me the Bengals to get to a surprising 3-1 uh, and one and drop the Jaguars to 0-4. Um, maybe the... Cincinnati is a sleeper team in the AFC this year. We'll wait and see, man. Depending on if Burrow can stay healthy. If Burrow can stay healthy, indeed. Up next, we got the Tennessee Titans versus the New York Jets. Are you kidding me? Titans are going to wax the Jets. Give me the Titans. Titans, big, uh, and they get th- three in a row. They're gonna, they're starting to get it rolling here. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jets are going to fall to 0-4. That is obvious. They shut out last week. They got they got shut out last week by the yeah, Denver Broncos. Denver. Yep, I remember that. We got that game right. All right, up next we got the Detroit Lions taking on the Chicago Bears. The Lions, man, they looked like they were going to hold Baltimore, and Lamar Jackson managed to get them down the field. And then that last second kick by Justin Tucker, the longest kick in NFL history, sixty six yard field goal. Hit on the top of the crossbar and just doinked it barely in for that. That was that was a crazy kick. Watching that in per, watching that on TV, just seeing that, I was like, oh my god! I can. I mean, any if anybody was gonna nail that kick, you would have to say Justin Tucker could nail that kick or prime Adam Vinatieri way back in his prime. But Justin Tucker, that guy's an incredible kicker for the Ravens, man. But that was an incredible kick. Meanwhile, the Chicago Bears. Obviously, getting waxed by the Cleveland Browns, and this is going to be it. This is going to be it. Is Justin Fields going to be starting again for the Chicago Bears? I don't know. Uh, they beat him up pretty good. The, the Browns did. The Bears gave up nine sacks. That's unbelievable. Nine sacks to Miles Garrett. One of those sacks was, I mean, not just by one player, but a lot of Browns defenders. I think one of those sacks was also Jadeveon. Miles Garrett. Yeah, four and a half by Garrett, and one of those sacks I think was by Jadeveon Clowney too. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, who I'm gonna go with? I don't know. You you want to go first with this uh, one? I think I'm gonna go. I'm still probably gonna go with the Bears. Yeah, I'll take the I'll take the Bears as well. Let's see what kind but of game. This is probably Detroit's best chance to get a win. It probably is. We'll see what happens if Jared Goff can get something going. But this is going to be a good game. But I'm going to side and go Chicago as well. For, yeah, I, for, I think Detroit falls to 0-4. Yeah. All right. Up next, we got the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins, with Jacoby Brissett, took the Las Vegas Raiders to overtime. Meanwhile, the Indianapolis Colts, they were close for a little while with Tennessee, but then they couldn't pull it off in the end. But... Ooh, man, another another good game. This game is in Miami and Indianapolis, still coming off coming off of 0-3. I think this is their best chance to get a win. So I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to take the, depending on what the Dolphins' defense does, this could have the makings to be another good game too. I'm going to go ahead, though, and take the Indianapolis Colts. Mm, yeah, I guess give me Indianapolis to get their first win. Um, but I was surprised that, uh, Miami actually had a 14-point lead in that game. Yeah. Surprised they played that well with Jacoby Brissett. Is he still going to be starting this week? Yeah, because Tua's out for a few weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, give me Indianapolis, I yeah, guess. Me too. Up next, we got the Cleveland Browns taking on the Minnesota Vikings. The Browns with that big win over the Chicago Bears. And obviously, we know what the Vikings did to us. Still pissed about that, that we let that happen to let Minnesota get their first win of the season. But different story here. Cleveland is one of the better teams in the league. I got the Cleveland Browns 
getting a dub in Minnesota. And I got freaking Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb having a big day. And I got Cleveland's defense having a, having a big day as well. Getting pressure on Kirk Cousins and forcing a few interceptions. And I think they can shut them down. I, Browns are one of the better teams. Heck, they're even better than us, we can even say. So I'm going Cleveland Browns. Yeah, give me the Browns to get three in a row um, and drop the Vikings to one and three. Um, Browns are starting to roll after, you know, letting that game slip away in week one against Kansas City. I like the Browns in this one. Yeah. Up next, we got the Washington football team going to Atlanta, taking on the Falcons. The Falcons have squeezed out a surprise win against the New York Giants in MetLife Stadium. In the last second field goal kicked by Young Way Koo on a day that ruined the Eli Manning reti- number retirement celebration. Meanwhile, the Washington football team last week taking on the. Hmm, what happened with Washington? They played the Bills. Yeah, they got waxed by Buffalo. That's right. The, the Washington football team just got waxed by the Buffalo Bills. Taylor Heineke versus Matt Ryan. We know Matt Ryan's a. Better quarterback, though. and But Washington, I think their defense is just going to get after Matt Ryan. I'm going to take the Washington football team to get a win in Atlanta. So give me WFT. Uh, I know Washington looked pretty bad last week, but I expect them to bounce back. I guess give me Washington. I, but I wouldn't be surprised if Atlanta could uh, beat another NFC East team. Yeah, for Especially sure. Especially one of the, one of the uh, more... War- the work, one of the not-so-good NFC East teams. Yeah, for sure. All right, up next, we got the Houston Texans taking on the Buffalo Bills. Lock of the week, Bills. Yeah, lock of the week. Bills in a bra. Um, yeah, Texans got, got, got beat pretty good by Sam Darnold and the... Texans had to start Panthers. Davis Mills. Do they, do they have to start... Is Davis Mills starting again? I don't know. We'll wait and see. But lock of the week, Buffalo's going to just completely wax them. Yeah, Houston, Houston is terrible. I hope they enjoyed being in first place in week one because that was the. I think that was the only week they're going to be in first place this year. Yeah. They, <laughs> yeah, they might go two and freaking. Fifteen. You're right. Their only other win might be Jacksonville. Yeah, they might sweep Jacksonville. All right, up next we got the New York Giants taking on the New Orleans Saints. The Giants are 0-4 again. And meanwhile, the Saints went into New England and took care of their business against the Patriots. Give me the Saints for another win. Yeah, give me the Saints to get to a surprising uh, 3-1 and one and drop the Giants to 0-5. Oh and 4 after yeah, oh that. Yeah. They've had two heartbreakers the last two weeks against Washington and then against Atlanta. And both, wait, both they lost on a game-winning field goal. Yeah, wow. they were. In, in the end of regulation. Yeah. All right. Up next, we got the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Eagles. Chiefs fell for an unexpected trap at home against the Los Angeles Chargers. And... And the freaking turnovers by freaking Patrick Mahomes. How many interceptions? Did Mahomes throw two interceptions? And I know one of the other turnovers was a fumble by, was it Clyde Edwards-Hilaire again? I yeah, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Again. Yeah, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire back-to-back weeks with a fumble. Because I remember watching Red Zone having you on the speakerphone. Granted, I wasn't live yet, and we were watching that game. And yeah. meanwhile, the Eagles just got waxed by the Dallas Cowboys on last night on Monday Night Football. I'm taking Kansas City to make to get to get the 2-2. Two and two. Give me the Chiefs. Yeah, give me the Chiefs to bounce back. Um, the Eagles look like they're going to be absolutely dreadful this year. All right. Up next, we got the Carolina Panthers taking on the Cowboys, who we just talked about winning last night on Monday Night Football, and the Panthers with their Thursday night win in Houston against the Houston Texans. Ooh, this is going to be a pretty good game. Sam Darnold versus Dak Prescott. And last time these two met, obviously Darnold was on the Jets, and Darnold got that surprising win at home in New York, which was the Jets' first win of – the, what season was that? Was that the freaking 2019 season? I think it was 2019. The Cowboys, though, who this is gonna this could be a this could be a good game. This this game could be good. The Panthers are three and zero. The Cowboys are two and one. But with that win last night. Yeah, who Cowboys are flying? They they put a 40 burger on the Eagles last night. 41 to 21 was the final. I think you know I'm gonna take the Cowboys to give the Panthers their first loss of the season. Give me Dallas. Yeah, as much as I don't like doing this, I'm probably going to go with the Cowboys as well. I think this is the Panthers' toughest game so far. Uh, So give me the Cowboys in an upset. 
All right. All right. Up next, we got the Arizona Cardinals going to SoFi Stadium to take on the Los Angeles Rams. The Cardinals were hanging it. We're kind of in a little bit of a tough battle, but pulled away in the second half against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Meanwhile, the Los Angeles Rams, oh man, they did work against the defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They, the Rams are for real. Let's be real on that one. And we know that we know how tough they're gonna be. They're gonna. They, yeah, I think uh, they might be Super Bowl contenders this year. And they won the they won the Stafford Goff trade. Yeah, they definitely did. But who? Still plenty of season left. We know not everybody's going to go undefeated, that's for sure. But I got the Los Angeles Rams handing the Cardinals their first loss of the season, so give me the Rams. Yeah, give me the Rams as well to get to 4 and all. Their offense looks explosive right now. Yeah, they really do look explosive. That's just why it's going to be really tough, and we might be picking against us two weeks in a row because we play the Rams next, next week on a short week in Seattle on Thursday night football. Yeah. But, yeah, not, but like I said, this week, back to the Seahawks 49ers game, which we decided to do first. Let's just because when we pick against our team, that doesn't mean we don't we don't want to lose. We hope that we win, and that's why I say knock on wood and hope that we're wrong and hope that we get a win. You yeah, know? we uh, the, the, the Seahawks sometimes have a chance of proving the doubters and sometimes proving us wrong when we're not feeling confident about them. Yeah, that's just all it takes is is one win to kind of get things maybe going again. Yeah, they definitely still have the talent on the on the roster. Yeah, but let's be real. Even if it's just one win, they still gotta do a lot more than just one win. Just yeah, so. they they need they, you know they need to win like like you said probably three out of four or you know they need to get on a, a bit of a run here. Yeah, and every and defense needs to wake up, and the offense especially needs to wake up, especially in the second especially half. Especially in the second half, because we've been getting out to fast starts, but then we just don't do anything in the second half. Yeah, and it's pissing off all of us in the fan base, too. But other than that, back to the picks. Up next, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Green Bay Packers in Lambeau Field. The Steelers losing to the freaking Cincinnati Bengals at home, surprisingly. Man, Ben Roethlisberger just had a bad game. Meanwhile, the Green Bay Packers, man, in a battle with the 49ers and Aaron Rodgers with 35 seconds left, hitting Devontae Adams twice on two big plays to set up Mason Crosby for that game-winning kick. That was a good game. I got the Packers winning again, going, getting back-to-back -back wins. Give me the Packers over the Steelers. Yeah, give me the Packers to get... 3-0 after that drubbing in week one they took at the hands of the Saints. Uh, I think the Steel, I think Mike Tomlin could have his first sub-500 year in Pittsburgh. I think so, I'm too. not sold on Pittsburgh this year. Me neither. A, a lot of people were high on them in the offseason. Uh, uh, Roethlisberger looks like a shell of himself. Yeah. Ooh, all right, up next we got the Baltimore Ravens going a mile high to take on the Denver Broncos. The site of one incredible kick that would later lead to another incredible kick by this kicker who was only a rookie in 2012 when he kicked that long field goal to send the Ravens to the 2012 AFC championship which would lead to their eventual Super Bowl 47 championship Justin Tucker going back to the stadium where he had that kick especially after the kick he made back on Sunday to beat the Detroit Lions on the 66 yard and now have hold the longest field goal in NFL history. That was just an incredible game-winning kick when he hit the crossbar, but it was just enough to get it done. Incredible kick. Justin Tucker, right now, in my opinion, is the best kicker in football right now. Yeah, I would say he is, too. Meanwhile, the Broncos took care of their business against the New York Jets. This We'll see what happens. Lamar Jackson, I mean, he's been in some close games, and he was able to squeak out the last few, especially yeah. that upset win against the Chiefs, but... I got. I'm gonna take, and we'll see what Denver's defense does. Von Miller's looking pretty good. That Denver defense is looking pretty good. Von Miller being back has definitely had its impact. Pat Sertan and whoever else is just out there too on that defense. This is gonna. This could potentially be a good game, but I think in the end, I'm gonna take the. Uh, I'm gonna take the Baltimore Ravens to to get a win in uh, in Denver. So uh, give me the Ravens. But Broncos, they, they're looking pretty good so far. It's a good surprising three and zero start for Denver, but. Yeah, give me. Loss. This is Denver's toughest game so far, because Denver's played the Giants, the Jags, and the Jets. Yeah, that's but, a pretty easy first three. It really uh, is. So this is the Denver's first real big challenge. Yep, gotta shut down Lamar Jackson. Baltimore, Baltimore really has not looked all that good because they blew that game. 
game in week one against the Raiders. They had to come back uh, against Kansas City in the like the fourth quarter, and then they barely squeaked it by, squeaked by the Lions in a game I thought they were going to blow out the Lions, to be honest. We all did. We all did. We were surprised that game was even closer than it was and that they were yeah. able to squeak it out with that 66-yard kick by Tucker. Yeah, they well, can thank Tucker for making that kick. I, that's, I mean, what a leg he has. Yeah. Yeah, almost got that game wrong if not for Justin Tucker's leg. <laughs> so I'm glad we picked the picked the Ravens on that one. All right, all right, the big one. This is the one the whole entire NFL world has been waiting for. Tom Brady's return to Foxborough as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on the New England Patriots. Bill Belichick now faces his former best quarterback. For the first for the first time in history, and this has a lot of implications for history for what Tom Brady could do. I think the passing yards record he could possibly set in this, and some other records too. But Tom Brady also has another thing that he could cement to his goat status. He can now become the fourth quarterback all time to beat all thirty two teams, and I think he's gonna do just that. So Tampa Bay Buccaneers go into Foxborough and get a win in New England and Brady's obviously going to get a big standing ovation from the Patriots fan base. I bet this game has, has been sold out for months or how long, who knows how long tickets got unavailable, but that game is probably going to be packed to the punch. With, yeah. Yeah. P- Patriots fans are going to be bringing back their Tom Brady jerseys for one night, but I got the Buccaneers going in there and Brady becomes the fourth quarterback all time to beat all 32 teams. So give me Tampa Bay. Yeah, give me Tampa as well. Tom Brady gets his ultimate revenge by beating New England on the road. Uh, I think this could get ugly for New England. Tampa Bay's pissed after losing to the Rams last week. Oh yeah, for sure, man. And then, ooh, and then of course the Patriots got slaughtered by the New Orleans Saints. Malcolm Jenkins had a house call in that game too. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, the Patriots, yeah, they laid an egg last week. It's going to be another uh, sub-500 year for Belichick. Yeah. All right. Up next, last but not least, Monday Night Football. We got the Las Vegas Raiders taking on the Los Angeles Chargers. The Raiders with that, with that, with that close win against the Miami Dolphins at home against Jacoby Brissett, but barely squeaked it out, got into field goal range, and kicked the game winner with Carlson. Meanwhile, the L.A. Chargers... Went into Arrowhead Stadium and got a surprising upset win over the Kansas City Chiefs. Justin Herbert's looking good. Derek Carr and the Raiders, man, the Raiders and their defense and their off, they're looking pretty good too. This this is gonna be a good game from SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. This is gonna be a great game. But who I gotta say, man, AFC West. Who I'm gonna. I'm take. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the Raiders to get a win to make it four a surprising four and zero against the L A Chargers and make the Raiders four and zero on the season. So I'm gonna take the. I'm taking Las Vegas Raiders. You know what? Yeah, give me the Raiders to get to four and zero as well. I think the Chargers might have a little bit of a letdown game after that big win in Kansas City last week. Uh, yep. And I, I just kind of like the momentum that uh, the Raiders have right now. Yeah, the Raiders. One of the biggest surprises so far. I would definitely say. Maybe they won't have a second half collapse like they did last year. Yeah. And basically, those are our picks for week for week four. Let me know your picks down in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and catch you. make sure you guys tune in to NorbCam tomorrow at 4 p.m. for... The two-on-two, two, me, Norb, represent the Seahawks with CG Ruthless Sports and and 49ers report John Jay on Norbcam for our two-on-two two special talk in Seahawks versus 49ers. So, so tune in to Norbcam for that at 4 p.m. sharp tomorrow. And Dallas, once again, thank you for doing this with me. Yep, no problem. It's fun as always. Yep. And uh, we'll see how we do uh, with our picks this week. Yep. Anyway... Catch y'all on the next, catch y'all later. If you ain't with it, you ain't infamous. And as always, go Seahawks.